Growing up, I can tell you that I never had a cool car. Not, not in high school, not in college. I think that's one of the reasons people collect is because they're trying to either get the things that they never had or they're trying to replace things that they had and, and lost. And for me, it's probably a little bit of both. I never had any cool cars growing up, um, but I did have a lot of toy cars and uh, I still collect them too. It wouldn't be a passion that didn't come naturally. I mean, I think you're either a car person or you're not. You're either a dog person or a cat person or you're not a pet person. You know, it's the same way with cars. I think that we've lost things over the last 40 years. We've, we've lost passion in the American automobile. Everything's become a bit too utilitarian. Cars are about telling stories. That's, that's the passion, that's keeping the hobby alive. You know, we can walk around 20 cars and maybe spend you know, three minutes per car, and I can tell you why it's special, because they built 34 of them and only five of them were yellow, or whatever it might be. Stories are, you know, go hand in hand with the cars, and, and Provenance is about, you know, being able to tell those stories. It's about the accuracy of them, it's about paperwork, it's, it's about the history of the car, celebrity ownership, all of that. Rarity and desirability intersect, that's where your blue chip investment comes from. And I think that the cars that, that we've put into the collection have those factors. The trick becomes hunting down the rare example of that desirable car, you know, such as a convertible with the biggest engine you could get and possibly a four speed. Then you have the rarity and the desirability. You start to get to a very august group of how many of those were built. And that's, you know, where the hunt and the collecting comes into play. I think that the, the thing that most people learn is, you know, be selective. The fun is in the hunt. Anyone can fill a garage with tires, but you know, waiting for the cars, chasing them down, being able to liberate them from collections that might only happen once in a lifetime when that collection goes up for auction. I mean, the fun is in the hunt. What's the primary purpose of your collection? I mean, it, without a doubt, some people buy cars and treat them as art. Other people buy cars, go out, you know, and have a good time and enjoy them. Um, these cars will break down if they're not driven. They, they have to be exercised. You know, the ponies need to run around the stable. But I also have, you know, two different types of cars. You know, there's the cars that I do drive regularly, and then there's the cars that are just so valuable, and, you know, they're often on tour at shows in museums that they don't get driven as much as they used to. But they're all enjoyed just to different degrees. I'm Samantha Stiles and I'm Brian Stiles' girlfriend. I think that collecting cars has really strengthened the bond of our relationship. We have something that we share, we're both passionate about, we have fun with, we can travel the country at the drop of a hat and go do things and see things that we both truly enjoy. It's, it's exhilarating. We're each, each other's own voice of reason sometimes <laughs> when it comes to chasing a car. I might really want to hunt down a specific car and Samantha will, you know, talk some sense into me and say, do we really need this one, you know? Yeah, we, we find the right balance with each other. Yeah. Before I met Brian, I was a salesperson, so I was always looking for the best deal, the best buy, the best sale. And, um, and I think that that's helped me feed into this. For Brian's vision, I was on board from the beginning. That's why it was very important for me to find the space that he wanted. It was very important for him, so it was very important for me. It was just as simple as that. It's affectionately called the zoo. And it's called the zoo because, as you can see around us, we've got uh, a nice selection of fierce creatures. We've got uh, some goats and a bunch of fish. I think there's a cougar over in that corner. And uh, they all like to be fed high octane. The zoo is very important for entertaining. We have our kids come here with their friends. We have our friends come here with their kids. Something comfortable. Something where you can gather socially. Cars aren't necessarily the entire focal point, but they're an integral part of the space. I think some of them enjoy coming for the cars and others come, you know, for the different amenities, the, the pinball machines, the game room, you know, movie night, whatever it might be. If you collect things, or you're, you're wanting perfection, it's the same thing for the, the space that houses it. Oh, so. big, a big part of it is when you collect things. You have a lot of things that you want to display. 
So you can't just use a cookie cutter approach and say this is going to be the space and you get to put a vase over here. Your, your collectibles, you know, the exhibits, have to be shown in, in a specific way. So making sure that you factor all of that in, you know, when you're designing the space, when you're choosing where to lay out each wall, you know, how many paintings am I going to put in this wall or pinball machines or books on a bookshelf, it's all very important. Ownership is, you get the bills, you dust the car off, you keep it clean. Caretaker, yeah, that goes along with it, but it's about stewarding the car, it's about showing it, sharing it, and making sure that it's preserved for those future generations. You know, which museum are we going to choose to put this car in, whether it's titled to us or hopefully titled someone else someday. Those of us that are lucky enough to have a cool collection of cars and that are also blessed with having the time to, to be able to do something with it. Um, I, I think it's a little bit of a responsibility in you know, perhaps creating a museum, which is something that we're working towards doing. It does you no good to have a great collection of cars if the doors are shut all day and no one can come in and enjoy it. So the responsibility only comes into play if you have the cars, and if you do, then I think the responsibility is to try and share them and tell the story and promote the hobby as best you can. You know, people ask me, do you mind if I take a picture? And I'm like, I'll mind if you don't take pictures. There's, there's a lot of fun stuff here. And, and yes, if you can take pictures and share it socially online and other people give you a you know, thumbs up and enjoy it, that's what keeping the hobby alive and passionate is all about.